Welcome back to episode 21? 21? 22? One of those. And, um, yeah, as you can see, something's now missing. No more chickens. Thank God, no more chickens. Um, I look pretty empty now, though. We'll have to fix that. We'll have to put something out here. Maybe another building. Not this, this wall down. Oh, thank God, no chickens. Um... So, this episode, at least the first part of it, is going to be a bit of a cleanup episode. Just basically showing you some changes that I've made and some improvements to, to the way I've been doing things. With that in mind, the first thing I did... All the storage gone. Replaced with a terminal. And this is AE2, so... Now those of you who've done AE... Well, who've not done AE may not understand how nice this is. <laughs> Look at that, it's even with the wall. Um, in AE1, these were blocks. But now that they are uh, multi-parts, you can put covers around the outside. Now remember, it, um, yeah, it's not quite the same as some... Hmm, how to explain this? This bottom one, for instance, is hollow. That's because the, the cable behind runs downwards. So when you're p placing these covers around the outside, remember that the, the crafting terminal itself, or the any of the terminals really are kind of the front face of the block so you can't just put a hollow um, cover flat on you have to kind of fill in the edges of the block like this and that's fine that that works well um, that's a cover there so if I just see straightforward downstairs a similar thing applies I haven't moved all the storage well apart from the barrels uh, I've moved these con the controller that was sitting here and the disc. Where I've moved that to? Well, into a hidden carpenter's door. And in here I have my... Ooh, <laughs> trying it through a door. Um, it is easier actually to get through these things. It's just... I'm a dip. Uh, so in here I've got you know my single drive. I've got now 4Ks in it. Uh, all the way through and as you can see some of those are already full on types but there's still some left I'm gonna need another drive but I don't want to just plug drives in as they use, all use power so you know start with that the uh, the controller is in here as well uh, it's just behind here so there's you know there's nothing too surprising there however I now have more power now that you've already seen these I had it out there I've now added more of them, exactly the same setup, but with something called a power monitor. Easy, fairly easy to make. It's not uh, terribly. Oops. Oh God, can't spell today. Um, yeah, so a conduit probe, which is just some miscellaneous stuff that you've probably already crafted for other stuff. Machine frame, electric energy conduit, and electrical steel. The purpose of this thing is really just to tell you how much storage you've got. So. Past the bank storage is this big thing, which we'll come to in a minute. But also, you can see any Ender IO machine buffers too. So you can now see, obviously, the machine buffers are not full; they're being used up. And obviously, average output and average input. Uh, that's useful for seeing where, when power drains actually are active. This tab, on the other hand, is a bit more useful. Uh, what this is basically doing is saying. Um, Control generators, in this case the Sterling generators to the left, you click on it to tick. And you're saying emit a signal, a redstone signal that is, when I hit 80% of this bar, i.e. it drops below 80%. When, obviously it can go back above 80% and that will still continue emitting the signal. But it will stop then when it comes back up to 95. So what's going to happen is, as soon as it hits 80 it's going to come back up until it hits 95. Assuming that, you know, I have enough power input to, yeah, fi to fix that. And then this is just a big multi-block. Um, each of these is, is one block and you just combine them and the whole thing gets made. If you like, think of 10 of these as the same as the top tier energy cell. So, uh, resonant. This thing is 50 million RF and it's 10k RF in and out. Whereas this thing is, um, as you can see on the tooltip, it's 45 million RF, but more importantly, it's max input 
output is higher. So we can use that uh, to get some benefits and I could just e keep adding more rows and also back into the wall as well if I wanted to. Now, the way this all works, if I just kick, kick these blocks out of the way, there's nothing too complex here, although these, these look more complex than normal. All that there really is here is um, uh, the typical energy conduit, which is that one. The green, which is the um, the item conduit, and that's just feeding co uh, coal in constantly. So if I look in here, it's just filling with coal. And that's coming out of our ME system and into a chest up here, I think. Yeah, it's filling with coal. And as and when coal slots are available, it, it drops them in. So it's not doing anything, again, very complicated. Importantly, however, it's being controlled by this. It's basically saying, don't generate any more power so that is being passed by this thing which is the red insulated redstone conduit which is again quite simple to make that that comes out of the bottom of this power monitor or you can use the top as well but it comes out of the bottom comes up in here and communicates whenever this thing says hey stop reproducing power all fine for power now you'll probably notice that this isn't actually dropping and these are off. So where's the power coming from? Why isn't it dropping? Well, that's just due to the other things that are still hooked up to the same line, the same power conduit. You know, these lava stuff generators and the survivalist generators. They're just going to keep things topped off. Nothing too, too big to worry about. But when there's a big, big power drain, it's going to drop straight out of here. And that's what we want. We want this acting as a huge battery without having to just depend on what the conduits can contain and what the actual machines can contain, which is not much at all. Why? Well, we're going to have to get to automatic mining fairly soon, and to get to that, we need lots of power. Um, I'm planning, I think, on a world eater, also known as an uber miner, or lots of the words for the same things. Basically, it uses these. Uh, they're called mining wells. Um... And they're relatively simple to make. It's just iron and stuff. The problem with them is they use a ton of energy. And I think Direwolf is actually building one of his series. I've taken a quick look at that. And I plan to do it a little bit differently. So feel free to use whichever design you like. Um, because our only options there are using Funky Muller Commotion. Some elements of the design will be shared. However, um, if you like um, Ender Chests and kind of... An approach like that then go and look at the die wolf video by far if you'd like to see how to use a2 to do it then um which is a bit more complicated but again i think the design will look a little bit nicer maybe maybe um then feel free to keep watching this series i hope you do anyway but um yeah watch them both and see which one's better and they'll probably be fairly equivalent once they're done but again different designs but that's not the only thing as you notice also here, I had the um, uh, a Crystal Growth Accelerator. And there's a kind post by the A2 dev uh, called Akaso, A-K-A-R-S-O, on Imigo or Imigo, um, as well as Reddit, explaining how he'd automate them. And yeah, um, there might be a couple of other ways, but this is a very good way, I think. Let's just briefly explain this one. So here I have a chest. Attached to that chest, I have two things. I have an input bus underneath it, which just pulls everything out of the chest. There's no, there's no filtering. It's just going to pull everything. There is also a storage bus. Now, everything in this room is its own network. So although we have A2 here, not connected at least by data, only power is connecting these two. That means everything here is operating as a separate separate network. So the storage bus is the storage bus for the network. It's this, where everything will get stored. So anything that doesn't get pulled by anything else will drop into this chest. So this means this acts as both an input and an output chest. It's pulled out and pushed back in. Further along, you'll see that these crystal growth accelerators, I've put some glass on here just because I was walking by and ripping everything out of the, the, the water with my magnet which eh, wasn't too great um, th there's two other things in here there's a formation plane which is that white thing 
and there's an annihilation plane, which is the black thing. Formation um, basically is like an output to the... Um, it it pour, puts stuff out into the real world from the AE system. Think of it like an item dropper, except instead of dropping into the water, which we could do, you know, there wouldn't be any problem with that. We could put an interface up here somewhere with an item drop under it, and it would just drop into the water and flow that way. That would be perfectly fine. Um, that's an alternative if you want to use maybe something like an open crate. Uh, is it called an open crate from Botania? Yeah, you could do something with that and just have it drop straight down. Fine. This just happens to be a nice solution that's A2 only. Which, yeah, it's kind of cool for this mod. So, you'll then notice the Crystal Growth Accelerators, they're actually sideways. So the top is... Um, underneath this block, if you like, it's facing this block. So you have to lay them... Um, so I, if it was here, I would right-click here to lay them sideways. The reason for that is you have to power them on the top or the bottom. And because of the way this is all laid out, the top and the bottom... Well, I can't put anything here because I'm, I'm stood on it, and below it, it will get a bit more complicated. Um, but these can pass power through them. So if they're sideways, you can insert power here, and it'll go all the way along. And then I've got a cable running underneath, and it'll run all the way back. And, and you know... Easy, straightforward. Let's drop downstairs and see what happens. So under here, you can see this, the pipe work is very simple. There's no need for uh, to lots of cables. In fact, you may even be able to... You might be able to condense this a little more. I'm not convinced you need both of these cables on this side. Do you? Maybe not. Anyway, um... Yeah, I'll leave it as is. Um, yeah, you see you've got cables here. It just links everything together. Uh, these aren't doing anything any more than that. Um, and the network passes through these crystal growth accelerators. So if we look in here, here's the input bus. Nothing in here. Bog standard. You know, no filters. But on this side, in the formation plane, there is. You make the, the fluid... Flux seed, the nether quartz seed, and the surtus quartz seed, and you put a fuzzy card. That's the important part, because then this will also match any of the seeds that are not grown yet, not fully grown. So as and when that percentage goes up, it'll still match, which means they'll still get ejected. And here is what happens when they do. Let's get some... I wonder if I have any seeds here. It's not linked up to the main network, remember, so... Um, I don't... Uh, do I have any flux crystals? Flux dust and it's sand, I think. I want to say sand, which of course I never have any of when I actually want sand. Um, I think this is sand. Yeah, there we go. So, 36 flux seeds. All that we do is we drop our stuff in this chest. Oops, not the sand. He flew exceeds. Nothing happens. Well, it's not powered yet. So if we look over here, going into this other network, that's the important part. That quartz fiber is connecting it to the smart cable in our normal AE network. You see that up there? This connects the power. It comes down, and then regular smart cable. And it hits this. This is called the toggle bus. That's the end of the smart cable. This is the toggle bus. More smart cable. Toggle bus is equivalent to, I think it used to be called the dark cable. I want to say dark cable. It might be wrong, but in any one, I think it was the dark cable. It basically responds to redstone signal, and there's two versions of this toggle bus. One is inverted, the other one is normal. I've chosen inverted because of the way the switches run. I've got an override down here, and... Well, not an override, but another way to activate it. Um, another one up there. And just the red, usual red stock, red, red ally wire. So if, if up there I actually pull the lever, whole thing comes on. This network has its own cable, and as you can see, there's only four lines there. So there's only four devices. That, that, this, and that. And you can see now there's, all the seeds are going crazy. Um, so let's go up. It's my... Yeah, it's my magnetism thing again. It's ripping them still out of the... I'm trying to. Let's just take that off for a second. 
here there we go as you can see they're hitting the end of their travel and again it's not working at the moment because there's no power so if again i turn it on now there's power it's hitting the annihilation plane gone and back it comes to the formation plane and uh, they'll go through here <laughs> if i don't you know catch them from standing above the thing It'll go through there and keep on running until they've grown completely. Great little system. Um, covered with glass, which doesn't actually appear to work too well. <laughs> so I may just cover them with more stuff just to stop me ripping stuff out. Or in fact, just move this so that it's nowhere near the rest of the system. I will connect to the rest of the system in such a way later that um, I can just order something up. Like the pure crystals and they'll just make this. So that's that, and we should be able to see, I think, if you see the average output, average input, again, this is because we've got this system powered now, 240 RF per tick, and if I shut it off, it's dropping right down. Really useful to be able to see how much power your systems take, as long as you've got shut off uh, switches. Cool. So that's the, the the start of the episode. <laughs> I did all this off, off of camera so you didn't have to be bored watching me uh, implement all of this because I wanted to get that out of the way just to clean things up before we move on to the next stage. The next fa stage is actually working towards making uh, automatic mining a reality. To do that, we're going to have to do a couple of things first. Uh, because we're going to be mining remotely, uh, we need to be able to transfer items and power remotely. Items wouldn't be a problem, we can just make ender chests if we really wanted to. But that's not the solution for power, or indeed liquids if you wanted liquids. So there are, as far as I know, two ways to do it in this pack. One is it, with ender IO itself. And there's this thing called a dimensional transceiver. Most people are more familiar with tesseracts. And I guess I'm more familiar with Tesseracts as well. But they both involve a, a similar amount of work. The, distance, the, the difference really is with, with Tesseracts, you're probably melting down um, ender pearls into liquid, en en uh, liquid enderium, or whatever it's called. Um, with the dimensional transceiver, you're melting down redstone. I haven't really automated either one of those yet. Although, as you can see, this, this is very weird. Um, I can turn on, and you'll see, you see that grow just then? It does grow once when I turn on that, that, that sigil underneath. Uh, not the sigil, the ritual underneath. But then nothing further seems to happen. So I, I, I may actually need to make the end of course. I thought I was mistaken. I thought this end stone would make them grow just with the ritual, which I was, I was really pleased with. Um, but then nothing happened further. So, yeah. Um, probably have to go and replace those ender cores once I can make some of them. Um, I can do it, but it's just a bit laborious at the moment. You need lots of enchanted books. So, tesseracts then. I'm going to need to make a farm to make lots of ender pearls. And that's, that's not too hard to do. Uh, I'm probably going to have to rip up the floor a little bit here just to make more end stone. I've got plenty of seeds, if I remember rightly. Uh, I've got 31 ender seeds, so that will, will make a decent sized farm. I'm going to do that off camera, but just to give you an idea, it's going to be a hole in the middle with a planter, which is one of these. I can probably make it as fast as I can do, uh, as I can explain it. Um, do I have everything? Almost. Yeah, that's why. I need to cook up some clay. So I'll just cook that up in here while, while I explain. And a harvester. Oh, do I have enough for that? Probably don't have the uh, the tools in the middle. But again, they're not hard to make. Uh, so much easier having everything in one terminal to make stuff. We're going to get onto auto crafting as well. I, I, I want to build up a lot of materials before I get onto auto crafting because the AE2 auto crafting system entirely new um, and completely 
completely different. If you know what a Mac is, or a molecular assembly chamber, as it ugh, molecular assembly chamber, as it was called in 1.6, uh, it's entirely different. Um, it's like you've got used to this, you've got used to filling this with lots of blocks. Yep, it's gone. You're having to learn something new. And to be honest, I quite like the new system as well. Uh, I'm not too impressed with the channel system, but then I saw, at least initially, I wasn't. Um, which a lot of the AE2 devs have been having a lot of um, feedback over. People have been saying, oh, I really don't like this channel system. You're just making it hard for hire's sake. Well, it looks like that at first. Um, but what they're trying to do is try and get you to think a little bit more about how you lay out the networks. And it turns out that when you start looking at some of the features of the networks, which we're going to come to, it turns out that, that these these limiting channels, you know, like eight channels with smart cable, which I may have gone through, but uh, if not, um, you'll see there's only eight spaces. Uh, let's turn this on. There's only eight lines available, four on there. There's an there's off color that fills up the others. Uh, you can't see it there yet. But yeah, with this smart cable, you can only do eight. And then there's a dense cable. You can only do 32 on one cable. And you may think, you know, if you're not used to going to the late game, you may be thinking, 32 devices? That's an amazing amount. But, <laughs> yeah, once you start, you, you particularly, let's like, say, if you were doing a mass processing system, let's say you had, I don't know, five, ten devices just to massively chunk through iron and copper. And then you add another ten devices and another ten devices for other metals, and by the time you finished, you're rapidly running out. So, yes, we th there are ways to create the networks in such a way that that isn't a problem. Um, for storage, um, if you haven't watched any of Soren's videos, he, <laughs> he has this crazy um, way of arranging the storage devices, uh, often nicknamed the Super, Stor Super Soren Drive, or the SSD, uh, just as a pun. But... Um, yeah, it's another example of just designing the networks in such a way that it's crazy. Um, I mean, you can do as much as you want to as long as you think a little bit about rearranging how the networks are done. Now that rant's over. Uh, well, it wasn't really a rant, but while it was cooking up the clay. Um, yeah. <laughs> and the planters. Oh, still not. Oh, yeah, of course, I have to make the plant pot. Hmm. I suppose. What am I missing now? Oh, factory block. There we go. So the idea with these things, um, the planter goes in the middle below the level, so um, I'm not going to do it there because I need to rip everything up first, but if I put this here, then the, the ground level will be one above this with uh, a gap in the middle usually I think just for access you don't have to put a gap in the middle I don't think and inside here you can place um, uh, basically you can just if it's only a farm for one particular thing like ender pearls you don't have to do much else you can just pipe the seeds into here and then uh, one level above so you know if, if this is a 5x5 five five farm I'd put my planter, my harvester even, here. And it would harvest everything on the inside, and you obviously you upgrade this. You pull everything out, you sort the seeds, you push the seeds back into here, and everything else goes into your network. Easy. So I'm just going to do that off camera, just so you don't have to watch me. In case you're wondering, by the way, this is demonstrable here. Um, this design also invalidates the, the ritual because this has to be placed one level below and so unfortunately does this. This ritual only affects plants two above it, so that's one, plants on top of that, so that's two. So um, what you could do, I guess, you could try and put these rituals kind of around this, this planter in the same way that I've done downstairs with a mob essence farm. Um, so you could have... Ro there, there would probably be... Um, You'd have to move this over one, then try to fit another one because the, the this ritual is three by three. So you, you if I make a five by five farm here um, like this, it, the, all this is going to be occupied by seeds, but only these ones at the front will be affected. Assuming that I replace all of these by ender cores, of course, and assuming that ender cores also let me actually grow things faster. So for now, this was a nice idea, but I think I'm just going to rip it up until, well. I may just rip it up. I may not need it at all.
Well, so much for that bright idea. It seems someone has broken support for Ender Lily Farms in MFR again. Um, yeah, this has happened before. It's happened in 1.6. Uh, what, what basically happens is the planter, which is um, down there underneath that center piece, won't accept Ender Lily seeds. Um, I did record more video, but I just could not solve it. Eventually, I just figured out yeah it was if you put like regular dirt here with regular saplings it planted straight away it accepted them you just can't fill you can't push the end of the seeds into the planter at all uh, even if you put them in there manually they won't plant so um, manually it is for the moment but continuing on um, what I'm probably going to do then is just grab some of this cable I laid down for the purpose and some conduits. Do I have any of the facades? Ah, I do. There we go. Cool. They're really handy. And I made two blocks. Fluid transposer and magma crucible. Um, most of you probably already know what these do. If you don't, don't worry about it. You're about to find out. Um, magma Crucible. Hmm. Yeah, I'll put that first. And then Fluid Transposer. So typically, you, you're going to take these and then set their outputs so that the liquid on the right hand side uh, gets outputted to the right. The Magma Crucible melts stuff down. The fluid transposer exchange it uh, puts things into buckets or containers. So if I input from the left, whatever's in here will get filled with this tank slot and get output into this slot in the middle. Typically that well that can almost always either uh ender pearls or redstone or glowstone. So typically you can try and set this up to be automatic. But for the cheapness of these blocks, just I usually just create a pair of these each for ender pearls, a pair for redstone, and a pair for glowstone, and just export into them everything. So, you know, uh, ender pearls. Um, yeah, and just just fill up the entire thing. It's going to fill up here. Um, once you have an automated farm running and you get enough of them, you know, a like hundred or so, you just export everything out into these and the, the, the tanks will just keep topped off and you can use it whenever you want. The reason why we're going to need that stuff is that uh, um, really I don't have any buckets. It's horrible, I should always have buckets. Yeah, it's a crime. You always need buckets. Is that one of the recipes for the Tesseract needs wrong machine needs buckets. Full of resident ender. The rest of the actual recipe is actually not all that bad. If I just go to Tesseract. To make the frame I need Enderium ingots. To make Enderium ingots I need and you're in blend and pyrothium dust in an induction smelter. We'll have to make that machine as well. To make that, I need this recipe, and this is the important one. Tin powder, pulverized shiny metal, and resin and a, and a bucket. So we have shiny metal and we have tin. So all we need to do is break them down. Shiny. I'll usually make a lot of this. So tin. I'm just going to make three stacks, let's say. And up the whole thing to our sag mill just being pulled in automatically I think that should pull in everything with which if I have more buckets with um, and for the moment let's do this it will consume up a lot of ender pearls, mind you. So, 
Um, we're not going to be able to make a lot of Tesseracts to start off with, but we need to make this process to be able to make Tesseracts, which we're then going to use to remote mine. But Tesseracts are about the hardest things you have to make. You can completely automate the process, but that's for another video. We're, we're running out of time with this one. I'm not going to do it straight away because I'm only going to need a limited number to start off with. It's more of a convenience thing for later. Um, so uh, that's pretty much the end of this episode. Uh, so we've obviously got an automated crystal growth system, which I've grabbed those from, and just cover you back up. We've got a power system, or rather a power storage system, which is the important point. Um, cleaned up inventory, and <laughs> hopefully at some point soon this will be able to be... Um, automated. All I need to do is add an export bus from a system onto that planter and it will start planting once it the support's fixed. And then this is just going to have an interface which is a mini chest attached to it. Uh, think of it as a mini chest that automatically exports into the AE system and then it exports everything into the AE and just the seeds come back out. Um, when you don't do it with AE, you tend to have to have this looping system whereby everything gets pulled out of here, gets sorted. If there are seeds, they go back in. If they can do, if not, then they'll come out somewhere else. And then you have a chest with the actual the finished ender pearls. I want something uh, more streamlined than that, but I can't really do it, at least with this. Um, I will investigate between the episodes, and if I can find a way of doing it, at the start of the next one, I will... Um, I will show that. One of the things I was considering, I'll have to wait for these to grow, is, um, in fact, will these grow with my... Shouldn't do, because it's the same as the ritual. But I do see them responding. See? They respond, but only once. Um, I was considering to see if Horn of the Wild would break them. The same thing I used to make flowers out there break. And then I could uh, suck up all the actual ender pills and seeds using a vacuum chest. But I couldn't replant them. But at least that means mm, I can easily see when I'm passing here if they're usable. Planting, there's yeah, there's other ways of planting like Thorncraft Gold, but I'm not there yet, so I don't know. If you have any suggestions, uh, obviously when I'm recording this is probably going to be a few days behind or longer when you actually see it. So I may have already implemented something in subsequent videos. But if you see this the day it comes out and you have a way that works in 1.7, do not hesitate to comment on it and let me know. Speaking of comments, leave comments on anything else and let me know. Or um, leave a like or, or subscribe if you want to see more videos. Entirely up to you. If you see any problems with the videos, at least let me know as well because I want, obviously want to improve. Yeah, I think that's it for this episode. That's that's a fair amount of stuff covered. Uh, we just gotta wait for. Well, let's just melt down more ender pearls because yeah, what else do I need them for? Um, everything is, it, as it seems. And six now. I want to make a few more buckets. In fact, are we on to the tin? We are. So will that make me enderium blend now? Enderium. <laughs> yeah, it's deciding not to insert. Um, uh, shiny. Why are you not being pulled in? Oh, don't tell me you're... Oh, it's cooking it back up. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so be aware of that. If you have a system that <laughs> pulls ingots in to their um, dust form, then make sure you don't have a machine next to them that pulls them back in and reforms them into ingots. Just an aside. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching.